So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Markus Berater. I come from the Transporium Group, which is uh, a group of uh, companies dedicated to the enhancement of transportation systems. Um, what is the Transporium Group? First of all, it's software for transport logistics. Uh, and it is software without any kind of installation. It is web-based, software as a service, cloud-based, you name it. Perhaps we can have a discussion afterwards where the differences are. I'm not so sure about that. So, uh, it is, it is this uh, yeah, online world uh, accessible everywhere. And the idea is to, and we heard a lot of collaboration in this uh, speech uh, from Unilever and this is what our systems are about. We are focusing on enhancing the collaboration between supply chain partners. So this is the basic principle we are always talking about, like have a good communication and create links between those partners within uh, or through communication and enhance collaboration, create transparency and in the end generate time and cost savings, which is then resulting in uh, also environmental aspects. Um, yeah, what are we addressing? So first of all, market transparency. We want to, to give uh, shipping companies like uh, retail and industry companies the best possible market transparency. So an overview which uh, carriers they could use in certain markets and for certain topics and certain jobs across the world because uh, even big companies of course don't always know what uh, are the best carriers I don't know in Argentina or <laughs> somewhere else if you enter new markets uh, you need market transparency this is what the, the platforms uh, we are offering can, can provide we increase cycle times and uh, enhanced process efficiency. Empty miles reduction is a, is a big topic. A reduction of waiting times within uh, a transportation process and the supply chain transparency or I already mentioned. And in the end uh, you want to know uh, how was my quarter, how was my year, how was my, how was my term. So providing data for controlling and uh, further strategy. Uh, the group is based on uh, three companies. I want to talk about the blue and orange company now because the third one, Mercarion, is an industry special solution for uh, fast-moving consumer goods and uh, the retail industry. Um, Transporion is the original company. It is an operational platform uh, for the dispatching of, of transports, for scheduling trucks reaching a ramp, for uh, tracking and tracing when a truck is on the road, and for uh, collecting the data for uh, controlling afterwards. The contract is a platform for strategic freight procurement, so this is where this carrier database is located 21,000 carriers worldwide uh, with very detailed profiles and you as a, as a shipper can find the carriers for your, for your transport tasks you're looking for. Uh, additionally, we are managing the rates and the, and the contracts you, you negotiated with your partners and uh, we provide a, a system which helps you managing invoice controlling. So, and where is this located in the supply chain? So this is the, uh, the, the typical score model of a supply chain from uh, tier one, two suppliers to the manufacturer and then uh, wholesale and uh, sales department. So uh, the score model here shows, shows five stages within a supply chain and within uh, Within a company, you always have the same 
the same task, you have to source something, you have to produce something, you have to deliver it, and probably you have to collect it again. And our systems are at the interfaces between all those, uh, yeah, all those silos. And each of these orange dots marks a kind of uh, a transport process, which we define as a, a purchasing phase, the administration phase, the execution of the transport, and an analysis phase in the end. And this is how we are how we are divided. So, for each of these uh, transportation steps, you have modules on those platforms, and there is a a stream covering more the financial aspect. So, like uh, negotiating a contract, handling the freight rates checking the invoices and an operational and uh, shipment database stream. So dispatching the transport itself, uh, booking a time slot, track and trace the transport and uh, report the uh, performance of the carrier afterwards. Um, first thing is retail or industry companies access this database, look for the carriers, uh, create their own carrier database, set up a tendering documents and a tender can be once a year, can be every quarter, can be uh, once in two years and uh, you negotiate frame contracts there. So you have fixed rates with the carriers for a certain period of time and for a certain amount of transports. So this is all online and uh, you will analyze the offers there in the end and will come to a, a key or a ratio how to give the transports to a set of carriers. And what you negotiated in the end, you will transfer, uh, so this is the tender then, you will transfer to uh, this rate management tool we are providing, so the rate management tool shows you uh, from where to where, which carriers with diesel floaters, bulky surcharges and stuff like that, you have a very easy retrieval mask and you can uh, provide it to your whole organization, so <coughs> the purchasing department, the system will tell the purchasing department the contract is running out, the sales or a customer service, they can look for uh, Rates so a sales guy sitting somewhere can access the system and look what is the transport cost of uh, five tons of chemicals from A to B and can tell his customer the correct price for, for his logistics. Um, it has a connection to the operations department, so this is connected to the dispatching of, 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 of transport, so the transporting platform can look up rates automatically here and automatically assign uh, a transport to a, to a certain carrier. Um, yeah, this is the search, this is the provision of rates. So if you are a, a dispatcher of transports, you set up your transport order in the system, and the system automatically pulls uh, the shipper, uh, the, the carrier, and the, the price, and the service provider accepts this or doesn't accept it. If it doesn't accept it, the system will automatically look for the next one uh, in the list. Then it comes to transport execution. You have dispatched. Uh, your transport uh, truck uh, has to be loaded and has to go on his journey um, and you know this problem of waiting times. This was a survey done by the Verkehrsrundschau in Germany some time ago and they said that 50% of all trucks at ramps wait one and a half up to more than five hours until they 
are loaded or unloaded due to traffic jam at the ramps and uh, with a uh, time slotting tool where you can book a slot uh, beforehand and you know at which ramp you will have to drive at what time you can reduce this traffic jam and uh, jam at the ramps and you uh, will be able to to schedule your transports much better so your fleet will get much more efficient because it doesn't waste so much time uh, at one wa at one warehouse or unloading point. Um, with this transport order, there is a attachment service, so you have the possibility to attach all kinds of documents which go along with this transport in a digital folder like uh, CMR documents, pictures of damaged goods, certificates, customs documents, uh, yeah, even the invoice, and you have it all together everywhere and it is transparent to you, to uh, the, the carrier and to the end customer. Transport visibility, so uh, you can inform your customers about the current status of, of, of transports and you know when uh, a transport will be late and not only you know it but uh, also your customer will know it so he doesn't have to call your call center where's my transport and uh, your uh, Hotline has to look it up and tell them, yeah, there's a traffic jam, he will come in two hours. The customer, because he has access to his online tool, will see it by himself. So everybody is up to date at all stages uh, of the transport. There are different uh, possibilities how to, how to place this uh, status information. So we are working with uh, big uh, carrier companies like Daxa, Kühne and Nagel and, and the stuff, but also with uh, small small companies, two trucks and the, the boss is sitting on the truck himself and there is nobody in the office who could, uh, who could feed the system, so there is the option that the driver uh, can place uh, a voicemail automatically and it is converted in the system and it is displayed in the system to the customer, so uh, we're offering here possibilities for all kinds of, uh, of, of, of carrier types and for all needs. In the end, uh, freight invoicing, again on the contract platform, uh, once shipments are executed, the carrier will, wants to uh, send an invoice so he transmits his shipments to the platform and I don't know big organizations they handle hundreds of thousands of transport rows a month and you uh, perhaps have outsourced this task <laughs> of checking to a company and there are sitting students or whoever and checking every lane whether the prices are correct or not here in this, uh, in this model you upload the shipments to the platform and this billing module automatically checks uh, the prices and the lanes against the negotiated rates from the rate management and it will show you within seconds this lane is okay, this is okay, this is okay and here is an error and then you have a clearing process where the service provider has to give an information why this price is as a deviation from what was originally negotiated. And so you get into the position to clear 100% of your, of your shipments and uh, your prices. So you might uh, have a better, uh, a better KPI tracking and uh, better control of your freight costs. The other option how to use this model module is to create self-bill notifications, so you take your own shipment data out of the ERP 
upload it and the system pulls the prices uh, and the VATs from the rate management and sends the self bill to the service provider so you don't have any check checking effort anymore. Uh, yeah, transporter and reporting. So from the shipment uh, tracking, you have a lot of options how to how to uh, analyze the, the shipment data. So like transport volumes per customers and per transports, costs per vehicle type, on-time delivery rates per carriers, and stuff like that. So and always up to date. So it's real data, not three months later. You know it. Uh, same day. So what is the motivation of, of customers selecting this platform? It's freight cost reduction of course, it's uh, reducing workload for uh, schedulers, dispatchers, increased process stabilities, supply chain transparency, improvement of on-time delivery, so how it uh, helps you keep your service levels. You uh, assigned with your customers, yeah, and it ha even helps you to find out uh, which KPIs are the relevant ones to measure. Achievable benefits in numbers, uh, so this is, uh, of course, uh, weak data, but uh, we have carriers that tell us since they use Transporium, they could reduce empty miles kilometers by 13%. And yeah, reduce really significantly some uh, some process times and, and costs. Uh, always, of course, depends from where you come from originally. <laughs> um, I want to share something where I don't have slides for. This is some some figures. Uh, about the network which we are operating. I want to share uh, a module we developed some years ago. It was called the Carrier Exchange Platform CXP and the, the idea was to bring together several shippers and several uh, carriers into, into one open pool. So you have a, a, a shipper that has a lot of loads from place A to place B and there are ending in place B a lot of empty trucks and the idea was to look for uh, shippers which are in this unloading area and to uh, offer the carriers to see what the other shipper in this area has uh, loads to transport to a place C and it was a really sad experience we made so far because the system is developed but we really had issues in, in selling it because our experience was that, especially from the carrier side, there are, uh, yeah, there are hurdles to, to, to open really their books and show to, uh, to, to shippers that they have empty space on their, on their trucks because they are afraid that they get under under price pressure when the when the shipper sees that there is still some <laughs> some some uh, buffer in the in, in the transport space. So when we are talking about this uh, collaboration and about how to reduce empty miles, how to reduce total number of transports, how to uh, maximize the utilization of transport space and reduce uh, carbon. We have to work on reducing fears. This is this is a, a very important point in, in in my eyes because the the system, the systems and the, the information technology to organize something like that is in place. I th I'm sure we are not the only company which had this uh, idea so far, and that there are a lot of projects that are working, are working on the same, but you have to bring uh, the players in this field to open themselves and, and uh, be part of it. So, 
it's always this balance between uh, the economic goal and uh, uh, the social and environmental aspect uh, you're aiming at. I don't know if anybody of you has, has similar experiences, I would be curious to, to hear about that. The idea which we had there, because we uh, added a lot of uh, development effort on that, is, is not that, but at, at the moment we are not selling it actively because we don't feel that uh, the market is, is ready for, for such kind of product. Uh, I will try to answer your questions uh, as good as I can. You uh, can read my title, <laughs> uh, responsible for marketing and for public relations. So if you have a really technical question or question going deep into the systems, I would uh, invite you to visit us at our booth in Hall B2. It's quite big, you, you will find it. And it would be a pleasure to uh, yeah, meet you there. We have a booth party tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. You will get a beer served if you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Questions? Questions? Yeah. Not without a beer. A <laughs> uh, few questions actually, but I'll start with uh, the main one. Given your experience with this uh, exchange platform, so where do you think you would sit in this high cargo ecosystem for collaboration of shippers and logistic service providers? Where do you see this, this, this solution that you have performing services that people would buy, if at all? To be honest, to answer that question, I don't know enough about uh, about the iCargo project. I didn't have uh, so so many uh, contact points with uh, iCargo so far, but uh, perhaps we can uh, have, have a talk afterwards and uh, find that out uh, in, uh, together. Yeah. Thanks. Just the other question. That's <laughs> yeah. that uh, uh, you mentioned are using. Excuse me. What again? That's uh, in Kuna yeah, are using yeah. this. Your customers, <laughs> <coughs> given that they have some very capable transfer management systems themselves, likely capable of most of what you are doing, mm. what, why are they engaging in this kind of activity with you? What's the unique kind of service that is attracting them? Uh, well, those those big uh, those big network players, they uh, basically use this tool to, to generate uh, additional business. So they uh, have very accurate profiles in, in, in the database and they have whole departments uh, which are dedicated to, to tender management and uh, they simply participate in uh, tenders which are launched by, by, by retail and the industry companies. So this is the, their major focus. When they when they are using the system, and of course, uh, if a company, an important customer of uh, Kühn and Nagel of Daxa, would uh, decide to to use the Transporion platform for scheduling at at the ramps, they won't have an option. They have to they have to participate because otherwise the truck won't be unloaded or loaded. <laughs> Marcus, um, not really a question, but building on your point, uh, is the market ready? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's a brilliant idea. Uh, but your business model, eh? because uh, maybe later for the discussion as well, is that you see lack of trust. Eh? That's an important one. A gain share, what's in it for me? Uh, legal requirements, step in, step out model. Is there something that includes did you include that in your business model as well? Because my, my learning is, is that, that that's the most difficult part of having a collaboration network. Yeah. Well, uh, yes, we, <laughs> we, we thought about uh, th those aspects, but uh, the, really from what I, what I learned from, from, from my colleagues is that uh, they don't want 
to open their their books and to to show what is the real uh, what is the real booking situation. Yeah. That's, what's, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's that's trust eh? I believe in. Yeah. So making it more ben, ben, uh, beneficial uh, for, for the parties, yeah. that's, that's the key word. And it's not easier, but I think that's the one to open your, your brilliant idea. Yeah. Does your system then support any kind of auctions, e-auctions? Once again, please. E-auctions. Electronic auctions. <laughs> auctions. Auctions. Yes. Uh, no, this is not a not an auctioning platform. No. Okay. So you think it would help if it if it did? To get people to instead of direct competing, engage in some kind of market auction. I, I, I sorry, I didn't get the point. <laughs> well, okay. The answer is you don't support electronic auctions. No, we don't. Okay. No, it's not an auction mode, no. Okay, Thank you, Marcus. It was very interesting. And later on, probably we we'll go back during the round table to these questions. Um, now I think we have coffee bread. Oh, right. coffee. Okay, we have it.